good evening everyone good evening i hope you all can hear me properly you all can see the screen properly yes is it everything fine you all can see the screen yes i hope everything is fine let's wait for 2 minutes Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me properly? Yes. Please reply guys. Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me properly? Yes, I hope yes. it's fine. Perfect, clear. Please reply guys. Can you all hear me? One second. Yes. Clear. No one is here. One second. Yes. Guys, can you all hear me? Sharp at five fifteen. We'll start off with the class. Guys, can you all hear me? Sharp at five fifteen. Yes, Rujana. Thank you so much. This is our lecture number three on the chapter neural control and coordination. I have been constantly telling you that this is a one of the most lengthiest chapter of human physiology. So we have a bit more portions to study in this chapter. Today we have cut down the portions into the central nervous system, and today we'll be studying about the structure of human brain. Okay. So this is our lecture number three. This is an amazing Telegram group where we have regular discussion, quizzes, polls, updates on our classes, and OMR sheet examination. So those who haven't yet joined our Telegram group, don't forget to join at BioPoint New for OMR examination, which is only contacted the first YouTube channel to contact OMR sheet examinations as a part of Telegram quest. Okay, as a part of Telegram family, we have been conducting OMR sheet examinations also for my dear students to enable you to get a correct idea of how and what the NEET examination is going to be. Guys, why the chat box is remaining to be silent? Who all are here? So those who haven't yet not subscribed to our channel, don't forget to subscribe. And one important thing you can do for me: don't share. Uh, f don't forget to share it with your friends. Okay, don't forget to share it with your friends. Hit the like button right now, and you will have the latest updates on our classes and the notification relating our daily timetable. Also, if you join our Tum group. So, starting with this chapter or this topic, human neural system, and today we will be discussing about the. Only Shrujana is there. Where is Nila? Where is Harshita? Where is uh, Shivani, Shraddha? Where are all these persons? Little explorer. No one is here. Okay. So human neural system. We are going to study over here. Yes, this is the division of human neural system. This is a division of human neural system. What do you mean by neural system? Neural system means what? You will definitely be knowing it is similar to what nervous system, neural or nervous system. So human nervous system is mainly divided into two: that is central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Very very important. The central nervous system is again divided into brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system divides into somatic neural system. And autonomic neural system. So the human nervous system is mainly divided into two: 
that is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the brain and the spinal cord comes under the central nervous system peripheral and the autonomic nervous system comes under the so sorry somatic and the autonomic nervous system comes under the peripheral neural system so i'll draw a chart for you so don't forget to take a screenshot for this sorry okay one second i'll draw you a chart for you so human nervous system human nervous system the human nervous system mainly we are dividing the human nervous system into two that is we have already discussed that is they can be divided into central nervous system cns and pns that is the peripheral nervous system what are they central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system the central nervous system mainly can be divided or central nervous system mainly constituted by two main parts that is you have the brain you have the spinal cord you have the brain and the spinal cord over there yes nila what happened late for the class peripheral nervous system is again divided into two that is you have the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system and we have studied okay we have studied in the last few chapters that autonomic nervous system may consist of autonomic nervous system consist of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system okay sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system so this is all about the human nervous system and its division i hope you have understood about the division of human nervous system give me hearts on the screen then fast okay give me hearts on the screen yes thank you so much yes so we have uh, i'll make you another one more table have you all screenshots of this one more table i'll make it for you oh my god yes all of you so what are the main functions of human brain what are the main functions of human brain tell me one by one in the chat box what are the main functions that you know about the human brain human brain is involved it is a central processing system of our body am i right it is a central processing system of our body which controls the activities of almost all the other organs so it controls certain voluntary actions such as uh, breathing circulation uh, peristalsis all these different kinds of uh, activities that is involuntary activities taking place in our body is controlled by the brain then hearing memory speech sight all these things are also controlled by different lobes of the brain and we'll study in detail about that particular structure okay guys draw a flow chart along with me my hand rating would be a bit uh problematic over here but i'll try to write it so human brain can be mainly classified guys we have slides before that i have to make you sure that you know these terms okay just to recap all these things human brain is mainly divided into four brain four brain mid brain and the hind brain four brain mid brain and the hind brain okay we have three main parts in the human brain 
that is a human brain can mainly be classified again into three that is a fore brain mid brain and the hind brain the fore brain can be classified into three that is you have the cerebrum which is the largest part of the brain up to your lower classes up to your 10th standard you will be studying that human brain consists of three main parts that is cerebrum am i right you have studied in your 10th standard cerebrum then you will have the cerebellum and third one you will have the medulla oblongata am i right you will be studying exactly like this but when it comes to your higher secondary classes the fore brain consists of cerebrum thalamus and the hypothalamus cerebrum thalamus and the hypothalamus the hind brain consists of cerebellum the hind brain consists of cerebellum pons that is pons virally pons virally and the third one is the medulla oblongata medulla oblongata okay so now you will be thinking that the midbrain yes the mid uh, sorry yes the midbrain also has its own classification that is it can be divided or it can be consisted by the part known as corpora quadrigemina corpora quadrigemina very very important not there in your ncert but can be a question can may or may not be a question because anit is going to get uh, what ncert oriented okay so these are the main classification of the human brain so let's come back into our slides and let's continue with these slides yes so mainly human brain has three main uh, two uh, sorry ne nervous system can be divided into two central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central brain and spinal cord peripheral somatic and uh, autonomic nervous system then then you have the brain we are going to study in detail about the brain okay everyone done yes so the brain is protected inside the cranial cavity so the first protection for the brain brain is protected inside the cranium okay it has a three layered connective tissue called the cranial meninges which is a second protective layer second kind of protection for the brain so sometimes a question which of the following act as a protective covering for the brain you have the cranium as the cavity covering the brain then you have the three layered meninges what are the three different layers of meninges you have the outer layer which is dura mater middle layer arachnoid mater and the inner layer pia mater okay very very important very important terms is this that is the outer dura mater inner uh, sorry inner pia mater and the middle arachnoid mater are the three layers of the meninges so the brain is well protected inside our skull by the cranial cavity along with a three layered connective tissue which is called the cranial meninges then the arachnoid space that is a sub arachnoid space what do you mean by the sub arachnoid space the space between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater okay so the look the space between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater I'll mark it with some other color yes i'll mark it with black all of you arachnoid mater pia mater in between you have a space so that particular space you will call it as sub arachnoid space which is filled with a particular kind of protective fluid which is called csf which is cerebrospinal fluid it's not csk okay it's not csk or mumbai indians or whatever over here it is cerebro spinal fluid which is a csf clear csf which also act as a shock absorber for the brain 
which act as a shock absorber for the brain that is it protects the brain from mechanical shocks and injuries it protects the brain from mechanical shocks and injuries the ventricles what do you mean by ventricles it's not the ventricle that is present in our heart the ventricles of the brain guys the ventricle means there are certain portions on the brain look the grooves the grooves right the grooves in the brain that the cavities in the brain you will call it as what the ventricles clear everyone clear am i audible to everyone so main thing you have to study protected inside the cranial cavity by the cranial meninges consists of three layers dura mater pia mater and arachnoid mater the subarachnoid space is occupied by a fluid called csf or the cerebrospinal fluid yes yes nila and srujana the brain has three main division the brain has three main division that is fore brain mid brain and the hind brain fore brain mid brain and the hind brain prosencephalon mesencephalon and rompencephalon these terms are not there in your ncert if Uh, you are feeling difficulty in reading those names don't need to study because we haven't seen it asking for any exam you will uh, learn about all these other terms of these in the higher classes that would be better i think okay you have to better study brain consists of three main division fore brain mid brain and hind brain and if you are keenly interested to study the biological names if you are 101 percentage confident that i am not going to forget or misconfuse all these words with the other need necessary terms you can definitely study because they can be useful to you whenever you join your medical colleges or whatever after your neat exam fine you will not face difficulty over there if you study all these terms right now prosencephalon mesencephalon and rompencephalon okay those who are feeling difficulty no need to study because this will not be asked for your exam clear I hope four people are here. Only Srujana and Nila is responding over here. So, except you both, uh, Nila and Srujana, I'll be giving a homework question for others. Okay, I'll be giving a homework question also for the others. So, we have the fore brain, which is the prosencephalon. Okay, prosencephalon, which is the anterior part. prosencephalon it is the anterior part look guys this is a fore brain it consists of mainly three parts cerebrum thalamus and the hypothalamus which is the upper part of the brain or the anterior part it consists of cerebrum and the diencephalon very very important that's why because diencephalon is important diencephalon may be a question but prosencephalon will not be a question so if you study diencephalon you will confuse it with the mesencephalon pro uh, what prosencephalon all all these different fore brain mid brain and hind brain that's better you study cerebrum and diencephalon diencephalon mainly consists of two main parts that is the thalamus and the hypothalamus okay thalamus and the hypothalamus which is the two main parts of the fore brain let's discuss in detail about each parts that is you have the cerebrum cerebrum is the largest part of the human brain cerebrum is the largest part of the human brain it has two cerebral hemispheres which are held together by a fiber called a corpus callosum guys this is the fiber which is the corpus callosum if you look at the cross section of the brain look 
if you uh, look at the cross section of the brain the brain consists of two main parts yes look the brain is divided so these two are connected the right hemisphere of the cerebrum and the left hemisphere of the cerebrum are connected together by a particular tissue which is known as corpus callosum take care so this is an important question for need mcq question very very important really important question clear so cerebrum which is a part of the prosencephalon or the forebrain which consists of the largest part which is constitutes the largest part of the human brain and it has two cerebral hemispheres which are joined together by a tissue known as corpus callosum next you have the outer part of the cerebrum you will call it as the cortex outer cortex inner medulla you will definitely call it but the outer part of the cerebrum is called cerebral cortex it has convolutions and depressions and it is formed of gray matter why the outer surface of the cerebrum is gray in color due to the presence of the cyton of the neuron due to the presence of the cyton of the neuron okay cyton of the neuron clear the convolution and depression look the brain is composed of convolution depression this you will be calling it as the gyri and sulci gyri and sulci clear the convolution and depression gyri and sulci so the outer surface of the cerebrum that is the cortex cerebral cortex it is made up of which all things it is made up of gray matter and why is the outer surface of the brain or the cerebrum gray in color because of the presence of neuron cell bodies and the inner part of the cerebrum is called the white matter the inner surface is the white matter that is mainly composed of the axons of the cell or the neuron guys here you can study a major difference between brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord one of the main difference lies over here that is the outer surface of the brain is gray matter and the outer surface of the spinal cord is white matter the inner surface of the brain is white matter the out uh, what the inner surface of the uh, spinal cord is gray matter that is an important difference which you have to note it right down clear clear everyone yes next is the cerebral cortex the cerebral cortex consists of the cerebral cortex consists of mainly the following kinds of areas mainly the following kinds of area that is you have the motor area motor area means the function is it controls the voluntary movements of the muscles okay no books is going to give you this much of information so this is the apt information necessary material provided for a neat aspirant so follow this take it down everyone for refer any other books to get more information related with this clear so the motor area which controls a voluntary movement of the muscles then you have a sensory area that controls the functioning of the sense organs motor area muscles motor uh, what organs that is a muscles sensory area sense organs and you will have an association area in your 10th standard most probably in your 10th standard you might have studied about the motor neuron sensory neuron and association neuron if you have studied this concept give me hearts on the screen right now yes it is neither clearly sensory or motor but it is responsible for the intersensory association memory and communication this is actually mentioned the thing in your ncrt am i audible to everyone in your yes apton fine
take care next slide let me check how many slides are left out look how many slides are left out we have reached only 11 we have uh, so much next again the functions of the cerebrum the different uh, parts of the uh, cerebrum you don't have to study which lobe which part no need which you will study in the higher classes so the integrated activities of the different for example cerebrum controls intelligence memory judgment learning thinking articulate speech why i'm speaking my cerebrum is working yes so you don't have to study about which area or which area of the cerebrum is going to control all these things you have to just study about what is its function intelligence memory judgment learning thinking speech all the voluntary actions are controlled by the cerebrum this is how different function. So this is the auditory association, primary, this is the visual area, the, then um, different area, but you will have to study about this when you reach your medicine or MBBS. Okay, if you study right now, the thing that is needed for you also, you will not study at all this chapter because this is one of the most difficult chapter, which you feel difficulty. Most of the students feel difficulty over here. But actually, you can easily score marks because the questions are mainly going to come directly from this chapter, from the sense organs, from the master following questions, from statement questions. Okay, direct questions. Okay, no depth questions or no tricky questions are going to come. Reference, study the particular contection of nerve impulse. Very, very important. All year, at least one question you can expect from that. Next is the Diane Cephalon. We have studied that the diencephalon consists of thalamus and the hypothalamus also. First is the thalamus. It is a structure around which the cerebrum wraps. Okay. This is the thalamus. This is actually the thalamus. It is a structure around which the cerebrum wraps. It is a coordinating center which is a relay station for sensory and motor impulses. Relay station for sensory and motor impulses is the thalamus next is hypothalamus thalamus you won't expect any question very rarely only the function may ask as a question relay station for what sensory and motor neuron but hypothalamus is a frequently repeated mcq question repeated and frequent mcq question which is seen below the thalamus it acts as a relay station for thirst, hunger, emotions, temperature, all our emotion are controlled by the hypothalamus. It secretes a hypothalamic hormone. Can anyone, sorry, can anybody tell me which all are the hypothalamic hormones? Hypothalamic hormone, this is a homework for you. Homework for you. Please comment me on the public comment section. not on the chat box please comment me on the comment section homework number one we have homework left out okay so this answer i should get from surujana and nila on the public comment section after the class clear you both have to give me the answer for this hypothalamic hormone we have two hypothalamic hormone done then it controls the pituitary gland pituitary gland is a master gland of our body right so even the pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus. So you can imagine how powerful is the hypothalamus and how important is its function. It controls sleep, wakefulness, then blood pressure, heart rate, everything is controlled by the hypothalamus. Then you have the inner part of the cerebrum. The inner part of the cerebral hemispheres consists of a group of structures. Okay. Group of structure which constitutes the limbic system or the limbic lobe. Amygdala, hippocampus, hypothalamus, etc. It regulates the sexual behavior, motivations, emotions such as excitement, pleasure, rage fear etc the emotion is controlled by the lymphic system which is actually 100 percentage my guaranteed question name the part of the human body that controls excitement that controls the emotions of our body 
that controls or drives the sexual desires, all these things by the lymphic system of our body. Very important question, direct question for your NEET exam. Next, we are going to study about the midbrain, which is a mesencephalon. It is located between the thalamus, hypothalamus, and the pons varoli. Thalamus, hypothalamus, and the pons varoli. Midbrain, located between the thalamus, hypothalamus, and the pons varoli. A canal, which is called the cerebral aqueduct, passes through the midbrain. And the midbrain consists of four round lobe, which is called corpora quadrigemina. The midbrain consists of four round lobes, which you will call it as the corpora quadrigemina. And the anterior pair is a center for visual reflexes. And the posterior pair is a center for auditory reflex. We have already studied that the brain controls a vision sight. Hearing everything is controlled by the brain, right? So the first two lobes are the anterior lobes of the corpora quadrigemina uh, is a center for visual aids and the posterior pair of the co uh, corpora quadrigemina is a center for the auditory reflex. Fine, everyone. Yes. The hindbrain, the last part that is a hindbrain or rompencephalon. It consists of cerebellum, pons and medulla oblongata. The midbrain, that is the corpora quadrigemina, mesencephalon, and the rompencephalon together forms a brain stem, which is actually a match the following question previously. Ames, Jipma, papers, neat also, you have to expect. Guys, if you are sure, shortly aiming for your neat 2021, please, this is my advice. I have already mentioned to you. Please refer and study previous year AIPMT questions, especially physics and chemistry. Because biology, I have been constantly putting you the OMR sheet exam or the written test based on the previous year papers. There you will have been, usually you have been getting the problems that have been previously yearsly asked questions in the AIPMT, JIPMA, CBSC, uh, was West Bengal, Jake, ACT, all these previous year exam papers, different kinds of exam papers have been including the question. Okay. So physics and chemistry, this year, uh, nearly 2025, 20, uh, I think 25, 27 questions was directly from previous year AIPMT. One year AIPMT was directly extracted into this year's need paper. So you can imagine if you would have worked out that AIPMT paper, definitely physics score would rise to 120, 140 out of 180, right? It's not a little bit thing to score uh, 20 questions correctly, at least in physics, right? So I have already mentioned the world is becoming competitive and competitive. Neat examination is also going to become competitive from next year. Okay. Done. Done, everyone. Yes. So next year, so your target should be 600 plus in order to ensure a safe seat in a medical college. Not in any medical college, in a government medical college. If you're surely aiming for a government medical college, your score should be above 600 plus. Guys, if you are uh, looking, you will be having, uh, you will be seeing or you will be noticing that 550, 500, good score. Yes, guys, it's a good score for need. But we are not sure whether we would get admission in the government colleges or not. Fine. Five, my score is 520. For need 2021 it's for good score when you speak about to others about your score it's a nice score your percentage will be high but sometimes only you will be getting an admission in your college you will be dropped to one year more so it should not happen any further you have to target six five five fifty plus maximum not maximum minimum five fifty plus maximum six fifty seven twenty on seven twenty also no issues okay 720 on 720, we have been, uh, what, to score a mark like that. We should not have to, uh, what, waste at least a microseconds or a nanoseconds over anywhere. Even a nanosecond, you can study two questions. 
you can do two mcqs like this you are uh, what mcq solving skills should increase okay you have to utilize each nano micro every nanoseconds you have to utilize then only you can rise up to a high score about 700 since last time you know 2019 700 uh, i'll I, i'll clearly illustrate you with an example i was even shocked when i see this guys in 2019 a student with a mark of 540 a student with a need score of 540 his or her all india rank the all India rank for that particular person with a score of 540 will be what? Will be? Yes, it will be between. Nearly it will be uh, what? Between 15,000 to 25,000. Okay. Let's imagine the condition. This is an all India rank you suppose. A 540, which is a good score, but your rank is uh, what 15,000 to 25,000. But when it comes into this present case situation that is happening right now, I'll tell you a person with a score of 540 is now on the position of 60,000 to 70,000 all India rank. Can imagine the condition nearly students up to the score of 20,000 all India rank 20,000 can make sure their admission not 20,000 I'm not sure it depends upon your score also okay but when it comes into state quarter definitely you will get an admission if you comes under the first 20,000 of the all India rank also but this year look at the tremendous change happening guys 60 15 a person with 15,000 rank in the last neat exam now he is in the 60,000 rank are you all getting what i'm telling or what i'm conveying to you so that much competitive the world is going to become that much competitive the exam is going to become yes back to the class cerebellum is known as a little brain cerebellum is known as a little brain it is very convoluted surface to accommodate more neuron. It coordinates the muscular activities and the body equilibrium. Cerebrum is, uh, sorry, cerebellum is called the little cerebrum. You have to take out all these things from a, a dead body uh, separately when uh, you are attending the lab exam for your medical colleges. Okay. You will be provided, your group will be provided with a particular dead body and you will be advised to take a particular organ. Uh, or uh, that particular invigilator or the teacher would be illustrating you with this. When you are doing your lab, you will be illustrated with all these fra uh, what? Real brain, real heart. You will be supposed to see each and everything very clearly. That's actually a good experience. Yes? Then uh, what? Would be, would a teacher or a um, college will give us a living body to practice ourselves with us with the knives and the blades everything never right that body is only there right you have uh, so much of experiences uh, with these uh, dead bodies and uh, other mortuary all these things you will be getting familiarized it's actually a nice experience okay next is the pons baroli Pons Baroli will consist of a fiber tract that interconnected the different regions of the brain. It coordinates the activities of the eye and the ear and regulates respiration. Give me hearts on the screen. If you both are here, give me hearts on the screen. Give me hearts on the screen if you both are here. yes thank you so much so that is all about the pawns were only let me check yes we have two more thank you so much i don't know what happened with the shraddha and shivani also they were also the regular ones who attended the classes sometimes they may be busy with having any test or extra classes at school okay 
so the hind brain rompent cephalon which is consisting of the medulla oblongata also it is connected to the spinal cord extension of the medulla oblongata causes or produces in uh, medulla oblongata it controls all the involuntary action respiration cardiovascular reflexes gastric secretions peristalsis etc it also controls salivation vomiting sneezing coughing all these things are also controlled by medulla oblongata which is this part clear next spinal cord is again a part of the central nervous system itself it is enclosed with the spinal canal of the vertebral column it is also there also in the spinal cord also you will have the protective covering of brain that is a meninges it has an outer canal containing the cerebral spinal fluid it consists of the outer white matter and the inner gray matter i have already explained yes what are the main functions of the uh, spinal cord conduction of impulses to and from the brain it is the center of spinal reflexes guys reflex action definitely whenever you are going to touch whenever you are going to touch a fire the information that comes there don't touch the you, your hands will get burned that is not actually coming from your brain that is actually coming from your spinal cord so spinal cord is a center of reflex action not it very very important very important question almost all the people get confused about this spinal cord is a center of spinal reflexes so this is a homework assignment for you this is a homework assignment for you okay homework assignment for you shraddha and nila no need uh, you have to come and me the uh, question that i mentioned you earlier okay the hypothalamic hormone you have to tell me those question on the comment section but those who are going to watch this in the recorded except shrujana and uh, not uh, yes shrujana and nila except shrujana and nila all the others who are going to watch this have to come and the answer for these two questions on the public comment section after you watch the video this is your assignment for the day okay why impulse flow only in one direction name the bundle of fibers that connect the two cerebral hemispheres yes srujana nila please come and me the answer for this question on the chat box right now second question answer you please come and me on the chat box the bundle of fibers that connect the two cerebral hemispheres the left and the right cerebral hemispheres are connected together by a particular bundle of fibers what do you will call that bundle of fibers no the answer yes rujan it is corpus callosum so thank you guys see you in the next class that is 12th standard students who will be having one more session sharp at 7 pm today okay with a new chapter that is strategies for the enhancement of food production or else uh, let me check whether should i postpone it to tomorrow or not okay from tomorrow onwards most probably we will be having a strict schedule okay because we don't have any day more days to waste in front of us yesterday one day also i haven't taken the class okay so tomorrow onwards whenever i get the time i'll be just most probably for 12th standard not for 11th standard we will be moving but for 12th standard 12th grade whenever i'll get time i'll upload certain things as a live itself so those who i'll share the link also in our telegram group so if you are free at those time of live streaming you can join the class or else after your classes at school or colleges or tuition you can watch the recorded one clear if i find nobody in the class surely i'll be giving you one homework that's a must okay because i have to make sure that you watch the video for that only okay i'm not forcing you to watch it live itself you will get a homework only after that that's only thing it's not a punishment it's just to make sure that you watch the session it will not be at the end of the session also i'll be asking the question in the middle also okay calling out each of your names
so 12th standard topic we have to move a bit faster because by december i have to start with the second unit of 12th standard second unit of 12th standard that is i have to start with the genetics molecular basis and the evolution december january i'll complete off with that but january by january we'll be start doing the entire mock test of every subjects done even if we have not completed molecular basis or genetics or whatever also we will be start doing the mock test papers because one or two questions you will get wrong that's no issue but we have to make sure that you manage the time okay done bye bye guys stay uh, see you in the next class so don't forget about the homework do it right now bye bye take care